Sometimes the information you need to track status or make decisions is spread across multiple sheets. The report builder gives you a way to aggregate information that meets criteria you specify into a live report you can update and share with your team. Reports are flexible and can be used in a variety of ways. We'll highlight a few examples and show you how to use reports to roll up sales pipelines, as well as how to add Gantt charts and calendars to project summary reports. In this first example, our sales team is divided up by territory. Each territory has its own sheet the sales reps assign to the territory used to track opportunities. To see how much business is expected to close, the sales manager goes to the Home tab, clicks on New Report, names the report, and opens the report to access the Report Builder. The Where section of the Report Builder is where you select the underlying sheets that feed data into the report. The sales manager selects the sheets for each region. She can only include data from sheets she has shared to in the report and will not have visibility into other regions unless those sheets are shared to her. The Who section searches against contact list columns in the sheets you've selected. The sales manager chooses Rep and selects all of the sales reps with opportunities in the pipeline. Next comes the What section. The sales manager wants to identify all the deals that are worth more than $50,000 and have more than 50% probability of closing. She uses the when column to report against columns with date properties and limits the report to deals expected to close between August 1st and September 30th and views the results. She knows that Alex had a meeting with a potential customer earlier today so she sends Alex an update request asking him to update the probability of closing this opportunity. Alex will receive an email allowing him to update the information in the sheet. The sales manager can view the updated information by refreshing the report. The sales manager can add or remove criteria, like the status column, at any time. She shares the report with the VP of Sales. Note that anyone shared to the report must have access to the underlying sheets and workspaces used to generate the report in order to see the report data. To keep the VP informed of key deals in the pipeline, she schedules the report for weekly delivery. She then generates a link to a published version of the report that she can send to suppliers so they can adjust their production schedules. Next, we'll look at how to add Gantt charts and calendars to reports. Kelly is managing a new store opening and needs to update the executives on the team's progress. She goes to the Store Openings folder and opens the report she created to identify the high-priority tasks from the planning and construction phases that are in danger of not being completed in time for the store's grand opening. The report lists all the tasks that need to be completed. To make it easy for people viewing the report to visualize how long each task takes and how the tasks relate to each other, Kelly adds a Gantt timeline to the report. To add a Gantt chart, the underlying sheets in your report must contain at least two date columns. You can specify which columns to use for the start and finish date in project settings. Formatting in the underlying sheets carries over to the report and Kelly can make additional changes to the display, like adding percent complete to the taskbars in project settings. Report results are listed by sheet name in ascending order but can be sorted differently using the sort option in the column menu. Kelly can highlight the dates in her report by switching to calendar view and choose what dates to display in calendar settings. And those are some of the ways you can use reports to analyze and evaluate data across sheets. To learn more, check out these resources.